Hello, my name is Xavier Claro. I'm a graphic and UI designer from Biala, Italy. I'm working with Future. And today I'm going to present to you uh, this Aven UI UX design through Qt Toolchain project we're currently working on with Qt. The aim of the project is to deliver a demo of three target screen and a companion app for uh, an Aven interface using Qt. Let's start with UI UX design trends and highlights research based on our experience, papers and trends we found on the web in order to have um, an in order to provide a context and a scenario, uh, especially in home appliances and smart ovens interfaces, um, starting from now uh, to, um, to the next few years. Of course, there are many trends uh, into, uh, into the user interface in general, and uh, some of these trends are going to last while some others are going to fade soon. We highlighted five trends to look at into the UX UI scenario. First of all, we are moving towards mixed interaction. So um, mixed interaction through voice and gestures combined with visual aid and classic touch controllers into uh, interfaces um, are, are spreading into the interfaces, this kind of uh, mixed interactions. We have advanced personalization that is different from customizations and uh, it makes the user feel that the content has been created especially from him, for example, based on the uh, a previous behavior automatically uh, changing the um, the uh, the mode from dark to light uh, uh, following the um, the daylight and other stuff like that. Um, we have these uh, UX UI simplification and optimization trends. So we are moving to less thinking actions towards a natural behavior uh, for the user to increase uh, the customer satisfaction and uh, of course the accessibility. We have uh, an increasing use of animations and transitions. Um, for example, mobile-like animated interactions, uh, the switching from uh, one screen to another, not only in mobile devices, but also into um, embedded devices. And that's because uh, we are getting used uh, to mobile interactions and we tend to um, kind of expect this kind of interaction also in other interfaces and touch screen interfaces, uh, for example, like uh, smart open interfaces, of course, uh, the fridge, um, fridge interfaces, uh, smart hub controls interfaces, and so on. We have an increasing use of 3D models, especially now, into um, into um, um, into interfaces. So we have 3D graphics and elements in order to engage user and present object virtually to create more uh, immersive experiences. Into the um, ovens uh, and UX trends into, into ovens uh, are of course uh, this increasing use of touchscreen displays that uh, enables the touchscreen interaction. Uh, we have also a touchless and hands-free cooking uh, mode with, uh, for example, a guided, guided cooking mode uh, switching through uh, recipes with uh, gesture and uh, voice control and visual aid. We have um, smart cooking systems that, um, for example, we have tracked and auto regulated cooking mode uh, through smart sensor for smell, temperature, color that are um, inside the, the ovens. We have um, the increasing use and developing of companion apps for, uh, for uh, embedded systems and uh, of course the, uh, the increasing use of kitchen smart hub uh, into, into kitchens. We have um, some other kind of, um, of um, sensors like a camera sensor that uh, if you install it into, into your oven you can have some smart food ID identifications. Um, we have increased connectivity for the oven to other appliances, for example, fridge, the, the mixer, uh, etc., and this helps, of course, for uh, uh, the garden cooking experience. And then we have uh, um, this kind of social interaction trends. So um, we have virtual cooking experience, tutorial, master class, remote cooking mode, and uh, and so on. Uh, for what concern user interfaces trends. Uh, as I said before, we have um, the uh, these 3D elements uh, that can be icons, products, representations, uh, transitions, and of course they are um, also animated inside the interfaces. 
we have um, um, into user interfaces trends this glass morphism that is not a new trend but um, it's uh, it's going to increase uh, during this this, uh, this period and um, it's um, it's um, its features are soft shadows uh, layers and floating elements inside the um, the interface we have the new morphism that took uh, place from uh, the skeuomorphism that is a trend that is, has been set uh, especially by Apple's uh, and uh, Apple's design um, some years ago but now it's uh, it's seen in a mm, in a more modern way uh, with uh, this minimal design and plastic extruded look mimicking real textures and objects we have uh, an increasing um, attention on typography both from the uh, layout and fonts uh, fonts um, use uh, and also into uh, the message itself uh, the message that are uh, vehiculated through this, this kind of font. So there is also an increasing attention on, on words in order to increase the user satisfaction during the, uh, the experience. We have the uh, dark light mode and adaptive brightness um, functions. Uh, user expects this kind of, uh, of um, personalization. So uh, the light and dark mode also being um, provided into, uh, into the, uh, the concept. And we have the uh, mobile looking experience, as we said before. So animations and transitions um, that are mobile-like also inside the embedded systems. We decided to uh, divide each of these, um, these uh, kind of um, features into three target screen. Uh, one for the low end with a basic UI design. Why one for the mid-range with uh, an advanced UI design and uh, one kind of cluster of features uh, into the high end with a more advanced UI design, which includes also uh, video reproductions. This is also based on the uh, hardware provided for each target screen. So we have um, these target hardwares that are the low end, the mid-range and the high end. In the low end, there will be no Bluetooth and we will use Qt for MCU. Uh, also on the mid-range, we will use Qt for MCU uh, with a Bluetooth connection. And then we have the high end screen that will work with a full Qt framework and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi features. We um, sorted, out, sorted out some kind of main features that uh, an oven uh, should have and then we also introduce some innovative features in order to um, show how uh, Qt could help in uh, into the, the prototyping of this kind of uh, innovative features um, inside an embedded system. We have push notifications with uh, with uh, we have push notifications for the low end, it's not through the uh, the order but through the companion app in the mid range. We have push notification provided by the ovens for step-by-step -step cooking and oven configuration. So it's Bluetooth-based communication. In the high end, we have uh, in the high end we have also uh, the Wi-Fi-based communication. So uh, we can also introduce some uh, connection with the with the other devices and uh, the uh, uh, of course internet browsing. So let's start with the UI concept and design system for the demo. The UI concept is based on a responsive, um, a responsive system that uh, basically the, uh, the concept is to have one set of uh, elements that is, um, is, is going to be designed and then rearrange all these elements into uh, the different screen target size, uh, not stretching or changing dimensions of the elements but just rearranging it uh, just like a responsive uh, responsive system so we have um, um, the uh, reusable elements designed once and deployed uh, into the into every target screen so we kind of uh, have an, an atomic design system starting from the, the pixel grid then going to the the single elements and then going to the groups of elements and, uh, and controllers that can be um, combined together and um, deployed into uh, every each, uh, each target screen. 
So these elements, uh, we, we found this, uh, we, we can find these elements into the low end screen. This is an example uh, of, this is the concept of the, uh, the main screen of uh, the low end uh, target screen. And we have all the uh, oven elements, uh, uh, the timer, the buttons, the, um, the clock, and uh, of course some, uh, some other uh, indicators. We have the same elements rearranged uh, into the um, main screen of the mid-range. Of course, there is more space, so we have more elements included into, into the main screen. And this is the, the dark mode, and this is an example of the light mode provided for the mid-range, and the, uh, will be available also for the, um, the high-end uh, target display. That, um, this is the main screen for the, for the high-end target display, and we can see all the elements uh, shown, uh, um, all the elements uh, and trends we, um, we talked about before. So we have this 3D element, pizza element, that uh, will be uh, rotating into the, the prototype. We have the Smart Hub connection on the right. We have the uh, recipe uh, choice on the, on the bottom and the cooking experience mode on the bottom right. And finally, we have the uh, companion app that will interact with the with the oven um, directly for the mid range and for the high end, and uh, indirectly for the low end. Once we have uh, completed this concept, uh, this concept uh, screen uh, for each target screen, the the concept arrangement for the each target screen. We um, recreated we created the uh, different artboards into into Photoshop um, using the uh, the reusable elements, so buttons, labels, and uh, shadows, and of course all the design system elements. Uh, once they have been designed, they have been uh, put into into these Photoshop artboards, following the um, the dimensions for the. Um, low, the middle, and the high-end uh, screen. So um, on Photoshop, we created all these um, artboards. For example, we, we can see here the, uh, the low end. And um, each element is uh, uh, divided, uh, is, um, is a layer, is a layer itself. And uh, so we have, uh, we have labels that are text elements. We have, uh, um, we have uh, um, icons and buttons and shadows and, and all the graphical elements set into, into, art, uh, into, uh, uh, into layers. Then when uh, we finished and we are happy with design, we were happy with the Photoshop design, we exported uh, we exported the uh, all the elements, all the layers with Qt uh, Bridge for uh, for Photoshop into Design Studio um, in order to develop the the prototype. Um, this is very uh, this was ver this was very useful to use Qt uh, Bridge for the for Photoshop because uh, uh, we just had to um, export the the layers. Uh, created with Photoshop, and then import the the assets into uh, into Qt Design Studio, and then um, the uh, the screen were already set up uh, in uh, in appropriate way, so they were um, ready to uh, to prototype. We, I didn't have to we didn't have to move things around or um, recreate the assets into um, into Design Studio manually, but it was all set uh, and ready as it was in uh, in Photoshop. And we can see also in the bottom uh, left that it's all divided into, into layers and um, all divided into, into screens, so it's very easy to um, interact with uh, the graphical elements um, importing the, uh, the assets. We wanted also uh, to have a UI validation of this um, of this uh, screen before having it uh, uh, into putting it into demo. So uh, the the graphic we wanted to make sure that the graphical elements uh, were uh, appealing and desirable, desirable, and uh, we wanted to uh, to see if a user liked actually the uh, the design before uh, putting it to, uh, putting it 
into into the demo. And in general, user find um, very appealing, appealing and desirable the, the, user, the user interface. And um, uh, in general, uh, they were excited by the possibility of having such level of graphical details into an open UI. Um, and of course, some other uh, some other um, some elements had to be redesigned because users didn't understand uh, what what uh, they were what some buttons uh, were uh, heading to. So um, we also have a little a little bit of redesign actions. Um, for example, for uh, icons, this, uh, these icons, and for other elements. Um, so we had to redesign into Photoshop the the elements, and then we just had to re-export using Qt Bridge for uh, for Photoshop, re-export these kind of um, elements into uh, Design Studio, and that this was also very useful because we we didn't have to um, we didn't have to change it manually, so to change the labels, uh, positions, uh, deleting the the old one and replacing it with the, the new one, but uh, we just had to uh, re-import the the assets, and uh, and then the um, the new icons were already on on their place, um, ready to to prototype. So let's make a quick recap on how we approached this project using Qt. We started by highlighting some trends of user experience and user interface design uh, in embedded system. We proceed by making a concept uh, based on responsiveness and uh, a sort of uh, atomic design system where each element could be um, designed only once and then arranged into the different uh, target screen. After we designed all the elements for the for the design system, we uh, proceed to um, create the uh, different screens, all the different screens for the low end, for the mid range, and for the high end target screen into Photoshop. Each element is uh, in, into Photoshop is divided into layers. Each layer has been exported with Qt Bridge for Photoshop into and uh, imported into Qt Design Studio. Then into Qt Design Studio, we are currently proceeding to prototyping the uh, different uh, the different screens and the different behavior in the um, in the Avan demo, and uh, we will proceed with also the uh, the companion app into um, to prototype the companion app, and then we will uh, deploy it to uh, the different uh, hardware um, physically uh, to in order to complete uh, the demo and. That's it. Thank you very much for uh, listening and watching. And uh, now it's time for the Q&A session. So uh, thank you.